So, who needs environmental engineers? Well, a lot of companies do, a lot of big companies. Before I begin and explain like which companies or what fields needs environmental engineers, let's first start off with why we're even showing up. Like why are we even emerging and why do we even have a field for environmental engineers? So let's first start off with like sustainability and preserving the environment and like all this hippie stuff. So sustainability and like preserving the environment, it's still a pretty emerging field. You know, people back in the day, they used to like, dump all their trash in like their backyard or like the nearest river and they didn't really even care about it. They didn't care about the consequences of like what would happen to their trash. They didn't care about like what dangers could pose as a threat to the environment or their health or maybe even their neighbors. Like what could happen to that trash or would it burn up or anything. So after some time though, like people realized like this is a pretty dangerous thing to do. They didn't know what would happen if they mixed some things and would explode, would it, you know, burn up in flames, would it poison some fish, would it poison their neighbor's dog if the, you know, the dog drank the water. And so after some time and after some like problems occurred, the government tried to like step in and like create some programs trying to make this stop. So they created things like the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency. They created all these things like the Clean Water Act, the RECRA. But overall, they're just trying to create these programs to stop the pollution of certain things. Over time, you know, things got better. People just stopped dumping their trash in like the nearest river. They stopped trashing their backyards and their neighbor's backyard. But still these issues occurred. So maybe they dumped some unknown material into like a river and then, you know, they stopped that. But you know, the problem still occurred. They have that material now in that river. So it's really just one thing after another, you know, problems just keep popping up. Where if you solve one problem, another problem just like spontaneously pop up. In the end, we only stopped the problem. So again, they are just stopping them from illegally dumping something, but we didn't fix the problem. So for example, we threw away less dangerous trash, but we still continue to produce and generate trash. Maybe again, it's not harmful, not dangerous, but it's still a problem itself. We're still just now stockpiling and piling up all this less dangerous trash. Or maybe we stopped, you know, polluting the river, but the materials inside the river are still contaminated with whatever stuff we put in. So after realizing all these problems, then now we start to show up. Now we need environmental engineers to, one, not only stop the problem from happening, but to fix it. Fast forward now to 2020, or 2021 right now, uh, COVID, if anything, taught us that you can't really ignore problems. If anything, COVID has taught us the importance of like health and preventative measures. So for example, the biggest environmental impact right now or environmental concern would be like climate change. It is a predictable and preventable situation that we can definitely stop. Like we already know it's an issue, right? So we already know that if you dump some dirty things into a river, it's gonna be an issue. You're gonna contaminate the river. You know, all these sort of very obvious common sense kind of things could be avoided if we just thought about, you know, the next year or so, would this be an issue? All right, so now that we've got that out of the way, well, now you know why we emerged is because people are just are reckless and careless about their actions. Maybe they don't see that how it'll impact the environment or their health in the future. So that's why we show up. Now I can finally answer why are we needed, where are we needed, who's gonna hire us basically. So I'm gonna go over that list. Now the first one is sort of pretty obvious because I mentioned it previously. It's that the government is gonna hire you. So you can be working in like a military base or you could be working for the federal regulators, you know, the EPA. You could be working at a municipal city. So for me, I work as like an environmental compliance specialist in a way. I work on a military base and that is just to ensure that that military base does not get fined or regulated or audited by other higher ups to make sure that, you know, we're like, obeying the rules. So I'm just protecting my facility from other regulators before they like fine us. So that side of the government, you could be a regulator or like a specialist, compliance specialist, so they enforce the rules. You can work in like a wastewater treatment plant or a landfill. So this is like working for the city where you, you know, just ensure that your customers or your, basically the population of that city is protected and like they have proper drinking water, they're not dumping their trash in their backyard, you know, it's going to the proper landfill or incinerator or whichever location you are, you know, that it's going in the right spot and it's safe for the population. So that mostly, the whole broad spectrum is mostly working for the government, whether it's you know the federal level or the state or local city. So the whole umbrella is just the government. Next, where you can get hired is like a chemical manufacturing plant. So one could be like working for agriculture or maybe one who's producing pesticides, one that just sort of manufactures something and spits out some product. But you know, in that process of making that product, they probably use and release a lot of 
dangerous chemicals. So they need someone to like make sure that the whole process is like secure and not uh, out of regulation and like you know not spilling their toxic waste out to some neighborhood. So as an environmental engineer working in that chemical manufacturing field, you have to make sure that uh, that they're compliant. So like you might be in charge of that whole operating plant, overseeing that you know process, make sure that. Again, that they're not leaking out anything, so you're making sure that they're compliant. Or maybe that you're designing this whole process, so you might think, oh, maybe uh, instead of using this chemical that's more dangerous, like some acid, some super crazy acid, that you can substitute that for some other less dangerous chemical. So you're like the brains and the eyes of that whole process plant. And it also coincides with like working with the government because you will get audited sometime, that you're aware of these processes that you know generate dangerous things so you just you're gonna have someone like some higher government system overlooking your process so you want to make sure that you are you know in good terms with them and like understand the rules so you have to be like a people person in a way just to get on their good side and lastly sort of surprising is that you can be working for like a big tech company too some places like apple or amazon you know microsoft all these big tech companies you would think that you know all you need is like software engineers for that right you don't need an environmental engineer but it's not true they still need them maybe not as much but you still are an important role because again, every single company, every single private company is going to be overlooked by some government entity just to make sure that, you know, because you're living in our land, you can't just pollute whatever you want just because you have more money. So these really big tech companies, they want to be like the efficient pioneers in a way to like show the whole world that they are on a sustainable trajectory. That they're like the first company to like create some very sustainable computer. They want to like pave the way for like a sustainable future. They want to be like carbon neutral by a certain date. Just to you know, prove to the whole world that hey, look, I'm a good guy. So for example, maybe with Amazon, maybe you're ordering things with on Amazon, and then you know when you order something, it comes in a box, right? So maybe that environmental engineer they might have to design some really sustainable packaging system. So instead of like cutting down uh, new trees and forests for your cardboard box, they might just recycle something, or they might have some very sophisticated packaging just to make sure that every single cardboard use is like efficiently used. You have to fold it like 20 times to make sure it's really compact and really secure. You don't have to use as much cardboard because you know we designed it to where you fold it like origami that's like super efficient. Or maybe for example once you use an old computer you have you know some metals and some plastic parts inside the computer that can be reused and recycled. You know people just used to dump their electronics in the trash because like they didn't have any use for it because it was you know old technology. But now you can maybe recycle that. They give you like a discount or a gift card because you recycled their old computer. So when you like turn in your Apple laptop, for example, they'll give you like a gift card. And then after that, then some environmental engineer or whichever engineer will have to like disassemble your laptop just to get like the old scrap metal, like gold or whatever that they have inside their laptops. But all this is like really complicated. So they need someone who can see that and like build some process just to recycle. That way they don't have to spend so much on like new materials, they don't have to like mine more gold or mine whatever metals they need to make new laptops. So I know you're probably thinking, like I've never really heard about this, like I didn't know that they can recycle some things or that we were needed in some of these processes. And that's good because the fact that you're surprised and shocked and I guess confused that they need environmental engineers for this process means that it is an emerging market. It is an emerging field because not so many people know about it. The bad thing though is that because it's, it's still emerging, it's still relatively small. So you're not going to be able to like apply and then get everything you want just because so limited positions there are in this field. But the good thing also is that that just means that there's opportunity for growth, that it will get bigger. In a sad way, as things get worse, as long as there's like environmental destruction, then we will, you will see more of us pop up. So yeah, that's where you can typically see where we get mostly hired from. It is because the government started this, like, you know, they're the ones who proposed EPA and like proposed that people stopped up in their trash in the river that that's where it'll probably show up first and if you're ambitious and want to be like the pioneer for you know having a sustainable future then you know working like Tesla but you got to be like really creative to get into that I don't know how hard it is to get into those so don't ask I'm working for the government which is pretty slow all right so if you have any questions on like what else I can cover that's related to like the environment or personal growth just let me know Go ahead and like comment or and subscribe if you're interested. I'll see if I can help answer any questions that are related to this topic. All right, that's all. Goodbye.